Hi everyone, Jeremy here from Flatware Creations. I am finally live. Let's send that out. Hello everybody. Um, it's nice to be back finally in the shop. I've been away, away for a while taking care of my wife and I got this order in and I figured since I'm in the shop I may as well hang out with you guys. So on today's list we are going to be doing something that I've never made before. Uh, we're going to be making stud earrings. So we're going to be using these little studs, but we're cutting them out of these hollow handled knives. These are not hollow, so we're actually going to have to cut down the seam to be able to open those up like these guys so these are hollow and actually hollow and what I've done is cut them down the seam but I cheated and did it with my bandsaw um, I took the knife blades out first and then I cut them off uh, these were the pinch ones so I cut them flat so that I could get to this design Sorry, so I can get to this design because we're going to be punching those out with this guy right here. Get over there. So this is a punch and what it does is you put your piece of metal in there and in this case it's a piece of the handle whatever size you want this guy gets punched out whenever you hit this with the hammer it pushes it through these rounds and it basically cuts the metal out and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and we're gonna take one of these studs and we're gonna solder about center as we can get it I have never done this before. There we go. So I've seen it done, but I've never done it myself. So it is going to be a fun little challenge. And I'm sure by the time I get done, I will have figured out a whole bunch of secrets and tips and tricks and uh, little easier ways to get around things because I have 40 sets to do <laughs> so let's do this so what I've done is I've taken and split these apart now I need to flatten them out. I'm going to flatten them out with my press. You can hit them with a hammer on your vise or anvil of some sort to just flatten them out. Um, da, 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 da. Still trying to get my brain working. <laughs> um, so I've already taken and polished these, ran them through before I did the cutting. Um, the inside we're gonna have to clean I'm hoping most of that will come off in the tumble so we've got a bunch of things here the other thing I did was I set up uh, these little pill containers this is 8.5 that's the size in here hi Kelly they're not but it is nice to be back. Um, so I've set these up eight and a half, ten. 10. Um, I have one here at 11, 16, and 12. And the 16 is because we have this guy right here, the daffodil. And I'm going to try and get the flower in one punch. And that'll just be a little stud earring. So it should be 
should be a challenge. So I've done the easy ones. Now with these, we're going to have to use a Dremel tool with a cutting disc on it. And we're going to try and get as straight as we can. It doesn't have to be super straight because we're only taking off the outside. Um, so I'm going to be using my hanging uh, sorry my brain's still not working uh, my hanging Dremel tool you can use a hand Dremel or a real Dremel um, the real Dremel you're probably going to be able to cut through a lot easier um, but I'm going with the big dog because that's going to be a whole lot easier um, you do want to wear a mask with this. I started cutting through one last night and a ton of dust. Um, what I'm using to cut them are these little discs, just a little thin Dremel discs. Make sure you always wear eye protection with these guys. Um, they've been known to explode quite often, <laughs> um, especially if you're pressing too hard. Uh, let's see, what else are we going to do? I'm going to use the press to flatten these guys out so I don't have to hammer them. But first I want to get all of the handles ready for um, flattening and everything. So that means we need to cut these four. Um, they sent this fork, but this fork is super thick and I cannot punch through that. And I tried to punch through this one. Very pretty handle. But I tried to punch through it and no matter what I did, I couldn't get through it because I really wanted to go down this handle, but this is the thinnest spot and the rest of this just gets thicker and thicker. So I do not think it's going to work. Um, here's one that I cut off. I missed the steel inside. I took a pretty good guess as to where it was. And I noticed that my flower here, come on. I really wanted that to be a pair of earrings. Um, so I went outside and I removed the blades from all of these. So I have those, those lower sections to be able to use. So I'm gonna mask up and um, I won't be able to talk for a few minutes, but we'll get going with this. Let me switch that. I'll put on my mask and I'll leave it on this big one so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And away we go.
That one died. So that one died, but we did get it cut. And it is hollow. So I'm going to cheat and I'm going to cut this with the bandsaw. Let that cool off. <laughs> uh, yeah, it can be challenging depending on what you um, what you're using to make the loops. While we let that one cool down, I'm going to move on to this next one. It's not even tight. Let's try that again. Nice. You've got more toys than I do. I've been eyeballing this Swedish multi-tool for a little while. So that was operator error. I didn't put it in the chuck correctly. Thank you. 
Make sure I use all of it. So I just put on a diamond cutting wheel and we're going to give that a shot. That's working a lot better. You see that white dust? Nope, you can't see anything. Uh, that white dust is the mortar that's on the inside.
everything's all right so everything's getting pretty hot even my handpiece so I'm probably pushing too hard and this is all hot it looks like it's through so now I'll get the other side and it should pop off or pry off Put the mask back on and here we go. Getting like really hot. All right. So we'll give this guy a minute to cool down. And we're going to come over here. Tumblr, you gotta go somewhere. Yeah, go over there. Let's see if I can get the autofocus to stop. Okay. So now I have all these half pieces. I'm gonna see if just f putting them in there and slowly going down. I don't want it to fold over itself. I want it to fold flat. So there we go. We're all flat. Now this one's a little bit thicker, so we'll see how this one works. I'm not really squishing all the way down yet. I'm just trying to get things to start moving the direction I want them to go. So let's go ahead and flatten this out. All right, so we got our little spot here. and repeat just want to make sure that those are starting to go the direction that we want and like I said this is my first time ever making these studs 
and it's also my first time really cutting these handles apart. Alright, so this one might be a little bit more difficult, so I'm going to start from this end. Try and get it to not split. It didn't split. I thought up here it was going to split on me. Alright, next one. I'm going to do that one the same direction. Nice. That's probably the safer way to go for everything. Oof, this guy's hard. So, this guy is definitely getting a hammer. So that is this one. This side's a little thinner. Okay, so the thinner one of these went down. So there wasn't as, as much of the rim on this one than there is on this one. <clears throat> yeah, I'm really getting it to move. I think that might do it. Mm. Yeah, that part down there is just too hard. Cool. So, I'm really excited about these little flowers down here. Those seem to be easy enough. And then I'm going to run these um, through the buffer real quick. Just try and get shine while they're still big. So we got a bunch of flat pieces. We got this guy back here. Awesome.
I think that's going to be a really pretty stud earring. Just the daffodil part. All right, so this is cooled down now. Grab my mask. Let's see if we can get this one off. Hi. I'm getting smaller. So we're going down the other side. Yeah, Kim, I could have done that. That's a good idea.
It's loose. Here's screwdriver. Just using a flathead screwdriver. Try and pry it further apart. There's the blade out. Whew, that's hot. So that's the white mortar that's in there. Pliers. Let's see how close we are to getting this open. Come on, get off there. That's not good. The whole head broke off. I just put that there. Try this again. Let's 
Remember, we just need the sides. This side. Try and see where it missed. A little bit more in there. If you guys have done this before and you know a better bit to do this with, uh, please leave me a comment. Like I said, this is my first time cutting these, these up. Okay, I'm going to switch over to this thinner guy. I do think the diamond bit is one of the best ones for it. Try and get this last little bit here. Those things just disintegrate too fast. Yeah, that's not going to be a viable option. Try and see how big the chuck would go. Alright. We're in the home stretch. Yay, we got it apart. Woohoo! 
That was serious time consumer. So I'm going to just do that one for now so we don't have to worry about doing this again. Now we got to get this stuff out of here. Ouch! That's hot. So I wonder if I can crush it in the press. So I got a bunch of it out. So I just real lightly crunched it up, or put some pressure on it to flatten it. That was a pain in the butt. I'm gonna put my mask on and I'm gonna use one of my most aggressive uh, wheels here.
I'm going to try a ball bit. So I'm gonna put this on my uh, my fiber wheel here and see if I can get it any cleaner.
So I'm going to try that idea, Kim, and I'm going to try and uh, see if I can sand these kind of smooth instead of having to buff them so much. So let's go to the belt sander. Okay, so here's where, oh, sorry, here's where we are with this. So it took off the edges, but it didn't get down in the grooves where I need it. There we go. So you can see the shiny stuff that just got sanded, but it's stuff down in the middle that matters. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the tops of these. And if I have to go back over them um, later on, we'll do that. But we're gonna Get these processed real quick and then we'll start punching them out.
Okay. Let's get this put back where it goes. I'm actually going to take one of these little guys. Just in case I have to scrape something out. Okay, so I'm going to pull... So let's start with our big one. And I think we're going to have to hammer these out. Definitely makes a, a difference. Pounding them out. So they need to be thin enough to get into our slot here. So here's what we're looking at. So we want the flower to be the center part. So for my angle, I'm going to take and just sand this down a little bit so I have less edge there. So what I did was I took off more of this edge. So I should be able to get the flower in there really well. And this is our 16. This is the biggest one that I have. Metal hammer. See, it's wanting to go. You can feel whenever you're back in the same hole because it's tight. There we go. So how do we do? Wheat. That's great. That'd be a great one. 
Yeah, I like that a lot. Where's my 16? 11, 16. This gets tapped through. And there's still a little piece of the stem here. So I'm gonna see where this can fit. No, it won't cut those. Do I have the shears in here? use the bandsaw. I'm going to use the bandsaw just to take this off. I do have a 13, right? Oh, I have 12. So again, if you get too close to the edge, it's gonna take off. You could get, you won't get a round, a round piece. That's a 12. So if you take this piece here and you run it through um, a rolling mill and you can put a pattern on here and just keep cutting. Um, but that's what I can get out of that one right now. So we're 16, so I had to cut off the edge. <laughs> Sweet. Those are going to be so pretty. All right, now we'll cut this off and we'll get our second piece out of here. Let's see, we did that in 12.
All right, it looks pretty close. That's a 12. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm taking all of the blanks that we have here and I'm just putting them in just a little bucket to keep them in case uh, uh, they want some texture put on them or something to get be able to get more. Okay, this guy is annoying me. I'm going to put him back there. Okay. Make sure this is tight. All right, so who's next? Fit. Yep, it fits. So again, I'm going to take off some of this edge so I can get those flowers up in there really nice. Put those in a little safer spot. <laughs> so earlier I was taking a lid and put it on the back of my vise there. And I would just pop that down into there. And now I've got my piece. That's pretty. Let's see, that's a 16. So I'm going to have to go through later anyways. And um, sort all of these before I turn them into studs. See what can we get looking in here again? Come on. There we go. This is the most I've ever used these punches. Um, this is what I have. It's just a round punch. But it works. Alright, so let's go ahead and drop down. If I had my shears in here, I would just cut this right off. I 
I don't think I can get two 14s. I can get two 12s though. I was like, that one didn't want to go through. Ouch. So I'm getting them and they just have a little band design on them. And that's getting a lot thicker. Same pattern. I'm going to take off some of the edge. This was a 16. It didn't even dent it. Pretty flowers. To sixteen. And then I think the other ones we did were twelves.
Hopefully that helps a little bit. It needs to be flat to be able to get in in here. Oh. Okay. Let's see what we got next. This one's got a nice pattern all the way down. And it's nice and thin. So we can probably get almost this whole thing. Where's the other one? I don't think, oh, there it is. Woof. Trying to see if I can get two pieces out of this flower. So I'm thinking if I go a little bit on the top and then a little bit on the bottom. Okay, let's try that. I missed. Oh, punched out. Nice little piece. Let's see both of these at the same time.
now. Let's see if we can get our next piece. we get one more? I think we can get one more. Oh, sorry. So I'm hitting the head of that and it's starting to mushroom out. That's what we're left with. I put a couple in the wrong wrong box. So that one was off just a little bit. Let's get this guy flattened out again. I'm going to take and kind of grind this down a little bit.
Ouch. All right. So from that one from that one knife we got five five pairs I need to see if I can get this to work with my dead blow. Otherwise, this is just going to keep getting destroyed. Right, 16. Let's see, who do we got here? Yeah, dead blows taking more damage. So I think what I'm going to do is start doing these guys together so I make sure that I have matching pairs. Oh, <laughs> I'm looking for my 11. I'm like, it's gone. And this is 11. Let's find my 11. 11. Okay, so I got my whole flower out of that. If I do this in a 12, I can get two out of here. This is supposed to be my 12, but it's not going in.
and there we got all the pattern off of it Sweet. These are twelves. Um, I know that I have another one of those. I wonder if we can get a sixteen out of these. Yeah, if I take this edge off, I'll be able to get most of that flower in there. See if I can fit these in there and get the almost the whole pattern. I can. So I'm making um, stud earrings. And these are the handles from the hollow handled knives. This is one handle. So we got most of the pattern there. I've got my two here. We're in 16. And this little flower end here, I think that was a 12. Nope. Was it a 10? Come on. I dropped it. There's the little flower. You 
you are. An 11. Let's get the last one. Went under my vice. Get out from under there. There we go. We got it. Okay, so that's both patterns taken out of this. And we're pretty even. All right. Let's see what we can do about these big guys. We're gonna do this one. I cut these all off because they had the pattern at the bottom too. And I knew they were gonna make great earrings. Just make sure everything's flat. All right, let's go for Fourteen looks good. I haven't made a fourteen yet. Eight and a half, twelve, sixteen, ten, eleven, twelve, sixteen. I didn't plan on a fourteen. Trying to see what I can get out of here. The backs are so small. They'll fit right down. So anything a five or bigger <laughs> will hide that. So if I do these flowers, I can do those in a seven. If I do that in a 10, do it in a 13. Do I have a 13? No, I thought I made a 13. Well, you know what I can do? I can reach under the desk and get two more bottles. <laughs> So, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, <clears throat> now these are only getting used, the medicine bottles are only getting used uh, to hold them. So no medication or anything that was in there prior is going to get 
on the jewelry or anything because they're all going through the buffer not buffer but all through the tumbler okay so I think a 13 would be perfect for this one That's kind of what I'm looking at here. That's what I want. So you can see there I have still have my my flowers here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ron's what do you do to keep your retumbling rings and silverware all the time after show? So I save all of oh I save all of these packets from shoes I mean pretty much anything you can buy them online um, I just always save them and I'll toss those in so I keep mostly trays so a lot of my stuff will be in trays and I'll just drop one or two of those on there um, and then all this goes in a bag uh, and even my bigger stuff the stuff that goes in bags I'll just toss one in there um, after the shows I think it's normally it was probably every fourth or fifth weekend where I'd take everything out and toss it in the tumbler. But that was normally just rings um, that needed that because they get touched all the time. Uh, this becomes a very labor intensive thing. <laughs> yes. Um, I need 40 studs. So I need 80 pieces. Um, I've never done this before with the knife handles. I've done it out of plates before, which is basically the same thing that we just created just out of the handle of the knife. Um, yeah, that's why lives are normally so long for me. We just hit two hours. I just put on my music and just kind of zone out a little bit. I look up to see if anybody said anything and uh, just kind of zone out who are you I guess uh, yeah if I can pretty much I think this is about as simple as I can make it um, minus the ones that have the uh, this stuff on the inside hey Gus did you come say hi to everybody did you come to say hi this is Gus Gus. Um, let's see. Uh, where do you get all your flatware? Well, for this order, uh, the person sent me all of the all of the silverware. So this isn't an heirloom project, but we do a lot of heirloom jewelry. Uh, so anything that you've seen that we've made in the past or anything 
we can try and recreate that for you with your own family silverware. Yeah, hydraulic press would make it so easy. Um, I tried it in my one ton press, my arbor press here, and it um, it didn't work. <laughs> Um, I do know a person who took their old bar, I can't find it, their old Arbor Press bar here. Oh, let's flip this one over. They take this bar and they don't have the thing on top and she puts it in there and then she bangs on this with a big hammer oh I guess and she gets a lot of really good imprints and things that way um, I don't know about punches but I'd assume that it would be the same there's a lot of depth here to get your piece in so you should be able to get your piece in there pretty easily and then just hammer down on it um, I don't know if she took her gears out to do that but I have I have heard about that and seen some of her stuff hi Emily okay Yep, so the tools that I'm using, okay, guess I got to go back to work. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay, so what I did was these were hollow handled knives. What I've done is take and cut them down the middle um, this one so this is from a hollow handled knife and actually hollow handle and this is from a, a hollow handled filled knife so this had all the little white uh, mortar inside it that one's gonna have it too um, yeah it's that one no it's, it's pretty close um, what I did to make it easy on myself is I ran them through the bandsaw just right down the middle um, I did use a Dremel tool uh, this is my Fordham copycat with the diamond blade on it and basically we're going right down the seam and cutting that apart uh, everything got really hot so I had to take a break a couple of times but while I did that I was able to do this other stuff um, I'm keeping everything separated with medicine bottles that are just labeled the size of the punch this is the punch plate that I'm using and it's just a inexpensive round cutter um, I've picked out pretty much the pieces that I'm wanting to use and to make the matching sets I didn't start out this way because this is my first time ever making these um, but I started going making sure that I got both pieces in the same place um, that way I could get the most use out of each piece um, this one here I was able to get lots of pieces out because there was pattern going down there's like a ribbed pattern going down um, and then I'm just saving these because I save everything I don't throw anything away uh, you never know what what you'll need to create something else so was this this one 
Okay, so these two are going now. This was not that one. That one. So this was a 13. Um, I'm using, so I'm using this block and I'm using a metal hammer. Uh, I would rather for this to be like a, um, a bigger hammer, uh, like a actual kind of sledgehammer, but just a mini sledgehammer. Um, this is all rounded off and it keeps rounding off my, uh, my dies here. So this one I'm going to try and match up to same as the other one. And once once you hit it once, make sure that it's still tight in the hole. Oh, you can't see that. Pretty close. Yeah, no problem. So here's the earrings that we just made. And these are gonna get soldered on the back. And then we're gonna put a post there so that it becomes just a post earring. So I just have to make sure that these are big enough. Let's see, that was a 13. And then I'm storing everything in these little medicine bottles. So 8.5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 16s. The 16s, I really like, but I'm going to start doing more of the 12s and 13s. Um, a lot of it just depends on the pattern. Get you back up here so you can see. Uh, a lot of it depends on the pattern. So like I got these pretty little flowers right here. And I'm going to try this one. Ah! Keeps moving on me. This is a six. I don't think I have a six out yet. Okay, got to bump you back just a touch. Yeah, yeah, got it. So I just need to make sure I get one more of those. So that I have the set. This one I don't think is going to make it. One of these will work. Uh, what was that, a six? I don't have a pile for sixes. <laughs> And we'll go with, this one's pretty safe right there. Ah. So it clearly bounced out. So I'm pushing down a little bit until I feel it getting a groove. See how it's, it's not really moving anymore. That's how I know I'm back in the same spot and I'm not gonna double punch. There we 
we go. Got my little flower. Alright, so let's get this big guy, this big flower here on the end. Uh, 13 is too big. 12, 10, or 11. I think I'm going to do a 10 on this one. Here, 10. There it is. Pattern's gone. Yes, I did flatten the patterns after I cut them or flatten the handles after I cut them. <laughs> well, that kind of worked. All right, I found one. There's the other one. And there's my flowers. And those were 10. I think 10s are gonna be really nice. 10, 11s. Yeah, I think 10 and 11s are probably going to be the favorite. Maybe 13s. So here's a 10. Let's grab another one. Here's an 11. I think for size wise for your earrings without being to where they take over your ears. And then the ones I like are the 16s. You get so much more pattern in the 16. Oh, my mouse bumped something. There we go. So these are, I think these are small, but they're not too small. So we get that guy back there, that one goes there, this one goes there and there. And after I get all these cut out, then I have to solder on all of these little posts. Um, <laughs> these little guys. Yeah, I, because I try and use every piece, I don't want to let any of those patterns go. Let's see, so there's that one. That set is done. Um, you know what I can do? 
Why don't I solder one of these guys real quick for you? See if I can figure out a method for soldering these on to my torch. Torch is there. And I'm going to use a the solder that I bought. I'm not a huge fan of because I have to use flux with it. Um, let's make mm. we're going to have a problem because they're not clean. Here, let me see if I can clean these up real quick. Uh, plug this guy back in. Come on. So you want to make sure that the back is very clean. So what I what I plan on doing is just putting these in the tumbler. And they're going to come out really nice and shiny and clean. Hey, honey. see any of that? <laughs> no, of course not. should be okay okay so these look like they're clean but they are not yesterday I had to go down and actually grind some of them off so I'll see if I can do this without losing them or getting them real dirty from my fingers. That should be good for that one. That should be good for that one. So those are clean. We need one more of these guys. And what I'm going to do is put a drop of flux on here. This is just a plumber's flux. Normally I use acid core wire, or not acid core, but um, flux core wire solder. And things normally go really nice with those. I can just put a, one on here and it would just melt and f flatten out 
so that's our goal here is have our solder do that just to kind of melt melt down okay and now we need solder it's gonna be this guy i'm going to take and actually flatten this out a little bit I want it to lay flat so it doesn't roll around on me. I'm just going to cut out a little piece. All right. So now I want to put Grab all the tweezers. There we go. So I'm going to take, bring you guys down here. Okay, so you can see the flux on there. I'm going to stop it from auto focusing. Okay, now I'm going to put my piece of solder on each one. And now we're going to torch it. I want to heat up the solder. So I'm just using a big propane torch. Hi. I'm getting smaller. Okay. So I'm using just a propane torch. I refill these all the time. Um, and it's just a regular plumber's torch. So if you went to... Uh, Home Depot or uh, Lowe's you'll be able to find a plumber's torch um, pretty easily and you want a rosin core solder uh, there is links in the description I need a lighter here lighter 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 there we go all right So I'm just going to kind of move these around, heat them up until the solder, I want to keep it in the middle. See how it just melted? That's what I want. Okay. Now I want to take my tweezers. And I'm going to dip it in the flux. Um, so I'm just going to dip it in there just to make sure that it gets a little flux on it. And we'll get this lit back up. And I'm looking for this to kind of turn to a liquid again. Come on. Let's try dipping it in the flux again. Might need more solder. Let's see. I 
There should be enough solder on there already. I don't know why it didn't. Unless it just flowed out and filled up the whole back. And when it did that, it made it to where it wasn't thick enough. So let's see if I put this. Let's see if that works. And my spray bottle is All right, let's see if it's stuck. It's stuck. So I got a bucket of water over here. So that worked. So let's try it with this one. I'm going to see if there's enough solder on it because I'm still learning with this also. There we go. So let's put it right in the middle. Okay. And let's see if it will stick this time. It looks like it's right in the middle. Yeah, it's going to take that other piece of solder. <laughs> Sometimes things just don't want to cooperate. Okay, it shows it looks like it's soldered together, but I'm going to test this one out. Yeah, I didn't think that was good. This one here should be on. No, it's not. Hmm. What are we going to do about that? Those are clean. Let's grab this guy. Actually, we're just going to keep on with the grinder. I'm probably going to go back to Lowe's and get the solder that I'm used to because all I have to do is just tap a little piece out and lay it down 
and I don't have to worry about anything else. Just it does the rest. It fluxes and it holds really well. I don't want to keep adding more solder to this, but the solder that's on there isn't coming up unless I'm not getting enough heat. So let's do tweezers. I'm going to put a little bit of flux on it. Dot that guy. Get it put right where I want it. Come on, cooperate with me, pretty please. Okay, that looks like the middle. Okay, let's try this to heat this one up. See if we can get it to stick this time. Sorry, you can't see anything. So I'm just heating it up a little bit more. I just want to make sure that see how far I can go with it. Okay. See if that worked. There we go. Now we got a stud. So that's going to be our process. And I think instead of putting on just that first dot of um, solder, we're going to go ahead and put um, just the one piece of solder underneath like we're doing right now. So just a tiny bit of flux, enough to grab my little piece of solder here. And then we're going to put it right on the anvil. All right, and torch. And we've got a drop. Everything looks good. Spray it off. Dip it in our bucket. And test. Nope. Nope, that one didn't take. All right, so let's grind this one down again. I am not gonna add solder to this one again though, because there's already a ton of solder on there. And 
I'll try. We'll get some flux on there. The flux is a cleaner. So it really should do what I want it to. But I can't tell you how much trouble I've had with this thing, with this solder. Um, I usually use um, Harris um, electrical solder. So I'm going to take this one a little bit farther. Just heat wise to see if it's something related to that. So my wire did get slightly red. All right, here's the test again. All right, that one's on there. All right, so we have pretty pair of earrings. Um, I think I might have a package left. And these will go through the tumbler so they'll be bright and shiny. pair of earrings, studs. And they look pretty even too. So if they go through the tumbler and they survive, then I'll, fe I'll feel comfortable enough what is going on here? Ugh. Sorry, I just rebuilt this thing. Um, ouch. Where was it going? Yeah, so the solder, that's what we wanted. I found it. I found a whole roll. <laughs> Why is this camera so dark? Um, let me fix this. Let's 
see if I can get this to nope that didn't help white balance I think the camera just went crazy. Okay, here. Default. Apply. Cancel. Deactivate. Activate. Come on, focus. Sorry about the camera. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is what it actually is. So it's alpha fry, rosin core, and it's lead free. Um, the other one um, I use is uh, from Harris. Let's see. Yeah, so this is an acid core solder. I don't like the way the color turns out on it. Um, but this stuff, I love this stuff. I'm so glad I found a roll. Uh, let's see. Let's do... these 11s so I think a oh, big part for it is making sure that it's clean so once I'm done with getting all these done I'm gonna put them all through the tumbler Just want to make sure that these are clean. And hopefully we'll get it on the first shot. And you have to remember that these were on the inside of the knife. And knives are notorious for being just disgusting on the inside. Like they'll turn your tumbler water solid black. Right, there's one and there's two. We should not have to solder or rough those up. So here's what we'll do. We're gonna hammer this down. Clip us off two little pieces here. And we'll grab our tweezers. Grab our other tweezers. Drop those right in the middle. Just 
Just putting that one out of the way. So it doesn't get too hot and melt on us. All right, let's see if this one sticks. Looks pretty centered. I don't know if it took or not. Yep, didn't take. So I think I might have to uh, rough up the back of the stud also. Try this again. Not enough solder on it, so we can try this method. It's going everywhere but where I want, don't want it. <laughs> nope, didn't go again. Hmm. So I'm almost 100% sure that it's just because it's not clean enough. Um, this happened to me another time with some bud vases. So I'm pretty sure that's what's happening here. And... I can fight with it and fight with it and fight with it, but it's not going to take. So we'll have to try that another time. That was 11s. That was a 16. So I'll clean this one up and then we'll put it back in the bag. That way I don't lose them. 
and we can just keep making these guys let's see where are we at we're at almost three hours my brain hurts <laughs> let's put that up there put this guy up there so he's out and open we go back there Try and get one more done. On the back side, I'm hitting just enough to make it flat again. Got a really pretty flower right there. It's our 11. You guys see? This flower. And is this an eleven two? Yep. Actually, we'll go twelve on this one. So my plan is to, before I send these out, I'm going to make the pairs, but you just can't tell quite what size they are until you measure them, because one millimeter isn't, isn't really a whole lot. whenever I'm looking at all of them in the tumbler. So that was 12, two 11s. So we've got our patterns off of that piece. to go. Oh, there it is. <laughs> if one gets stuck on you like that, Take another one and tap it in. And that'll come out right out. Ouch. Right. 
And the next one is a 12. So we're going to take out the flower. So close. <laughs> it doesn't come out it doesn't come out and then the last one it just comes right out so we've got one 12 and two more 11s all right so i think i'm gonna call it quits for today oops wrong one So thank you guys for joining me today. Now it's dark. <laughs> Nothing works today. Okay. Um, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Um, I will be on here more doing this as I'm able. Um, I have a whole bunch more things to get on this. I have bracelets, rings, um, I'm doing regular round rings and spiral rings, um, 20 earrings, just regular earrings. Oh, and some of these studs are going to be made from the pieces of the handle that has a little tiny flowers on it. So those are going to be uh, really cool too. Um, and I have 20 refrigerator magnets that I'm going to make. and I'm going to try and get, um, uh, I'll get you guys the information on what I'm using for, for magnets. And these are really powerful. And I'm getting ready to make some bracelet magnets too. So um, I'm going to show everybody how to do that. Uh, yeah so stay tuned thank you for joining me thank you for so much conversation um, I will pass up most of these the rest of this mundane stuff for this and uh, I will be live again for um, the other parts of this order so each one will be a live part um, so you'll get to see bracelets, rings, earrings, and magnets made in the next four live streams. So if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Um, also, everyone who's subscribed can comment. So if you have a question or anything, make sure you go subscribe. Um, and thanks for joining me. Uh, I hope you guys all have a great day. And I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> Because I think I'm going to be done. <laughs>